the Airfix SDKFZ234 Armoured Car Plastic Model Kit in 176 scale is considered by many to be one of the least accurate scale models of this series of vehicle. Unfortunately, it would seem that the designers at the time when this vintage kit was created didn't quite get their research right. But that's okay, because a kit which may be a bit inaccurate would lend itself to a destroyed diorama. And with my latest group build of It Be Broke, I thought this would be the perfect subject. Hello everyone, I'm Matt, this is Model Minutes, and welcome back to the workbench as I show you how I created this snowy diorama focusing on this vintage kit. For a deeper dive inside the box to take a look at the contents, the sprues, the decals and the instructions, take a look at the dedicated unboxing video I've already made on that topic. In this one though, I'm going to be focusing on how this kit is to build and what I think about it at the end of the review. Quick shout out to Moz6510 models who actually donated this kit to the channel, I guess because I don't do enough armor. So thanks very much. And in return, why not go and check out his scale modeling YouTube channel as well. I'll pop a list of the products I use during this build on the screen now to give you an idea of the kind of things you might want to go and get if you fancy replicating my results. But without any further ado, let's crack on with the build. So as is quite typical with many of my builds, I will snip the parts away from the sprue using my cutters and then sand away the various amounts of flash that this kit has with a sanding stick. There are some ejector pin marks as well, which will need to be addressed by snipping away or filing down. My cement of choice during this build will be the Humbral Liquid Poly. And the first step is to glue into place the support mounts which hold the main gun in place. If you're careful with the installation of the main gun, it is intended that the gun be able to pivot. However, I'm not too fussed about this functionality if it doesn't transpire at the end. After all, this is going to be a damaged or wrecked vehicle. So these gun parts are assembled and then popped into their slots. There is also what appears to be some sort of aiming wheel which needs adding down the back. This defensive plate is glued into position here. It did seem a little bit misleading on the instructions that it should be further forwards, but the mounting points are located towards the back. There are some hatches on the side of the hull which need to be glued into place. They fit reasonably well, but they are a little bit large and they do protrude a little bit on the side of the model. Following on from this, I glued the main floor of the vehicle into position. It does have some little slots and locating marks for it to match up with, which makes it a little bit easier to do. I then decided to go a little bit off of the instructions and do my own thing here. So I added the other half of the vehicle sides and glued them into position, making sure that the floor was perfectly level. I then went and added the rear bulkhead and it was much easier to do it at this step than the previous step as indicated in the instructions because it just manages to slot into the right place. Moving on from this, I can install what I'm pretty sure is the ammo storage bins on the right hand side of the vehicle. And then I added the hatch which goes onto the other side of the armoured car which I've not yet done. Moving round to the front of the vehicle, I installed the lower bottom plate which just slots into place here. And then this was followed by repeating the process on the back, installing the rear engine hatch. Up next, the rear armor plate was glued into position at the back of the vehicle. And then this was followed by the front armor plate. Generally, the fit of the parts is quite good and the gaps are quite minimal. So they did a reasonable job of designing this back in the day. There are some smaller details which get glued into their little slots at the back of the vehicle. And then I glued into place this small part at the front of the armored car. The small holes for the suspension parts and the axles for the wheels are not molded particularly well. So I did have to open those holes up a little bit with a small drill bit. Then following on from this, it was a relatively simple process to follow the instructions and install the suspension and the axles. You do need to make sure you put the axles in the right way around though, because they technically only go in one way and will have a strange angle if you put them in in the other orientation. 
And with that done, it was time to glue into place the mud guards that go on the side of the vehicle. However, I'm of the understanding that these mud guards are not prototypical for the 234 series of this armoured car, and apparently they should be a single full length one. Personally, I don't really know a great deal about this particular series of armoured car, but it does seem to be an area that is mentioned in many places online. Turning my attention to the wheels, I wanted some of them to look as though they had flat tyres due to damage in some way or another. So to do this, I heated the plastic using a flame and then pressed it whilst it was still hot into this piece of metal I've got on the top of my spirit level. And holding it there until the plastic cools down allows it to take on this flattened shape. And I think it gives a reasonable reproduction of the effect I was going for. I did this with a number of the wheels and then glued them into place. It is worth noting that they did design the wheels to freely rotate if you glued them in correctly, but again, I'm not fussed about that functionality. Here are some resin 3D printed wheel hubs which I designed to go with this kit. They are designed as drop-in replacements, but I did find that perhaps I printed them a little bit too small because I did have to sand down the retaining part, but ultimately, it does work and I quite like the result that I got from uh, from doing this. It makes it a little bit more visually interesting. Now to move on to the actual damage of the tank. I wanted this to look as though it had been shot up, maybe had some explosions happen next to it. So to do that sort of effect, I went for melting the plastic with my soldering iron. Some areas I would go heavier than others and I would try to make it look as though the metalwork had been completely torn off and in other places I'd just do small indents to make it look like shrapnel or bullet holes. I need a suitable base to put my little diorama on and I was wondering what I should use and I was looking around my desk and uh, my eye caught this. It's a coaster that I've been using on my desk for quite a while. It's just a simple bamboo coaster which I got from Ikea. Definitely worth picking up some of these if you're in there. Additionally, I've got a new cup. If you'd like to get one of these for yourself, take a look at my merch store. Links are down below. Anyways, so the coaster. This seems to fit the vehicle absolutely perfectly, so I'm definitely going to use this. The display base was covered with some household filler. This is just normal cheap stuff you can get in a home hardware shop. I did add a little bit of water to make it a little bit more usable, and I would press the vehicle into it to figure out where I kind of wanted to put it. I also wanted some sandbags, and to make the sandbags I just used some sticky tack which I rolled out into a suitable shape and then cut into individual lengths. I then used this general purpose glue to build them up into a sandbag wall. I've never really done this before and it did take a little bit of time and patience to figure out how to kind of do this, but in the end I'm pretty happy with how it looks. Whilst the filler was still wet, I'd sprinkle some sand onto the surface to give it a little bit more extra texture. Now it's time to prime everything. So I've got this very generic black spray paint primer and I simply use this on all of the parts I'm going to add to the diorama. So this included the vehicle, the 3D printed accessories and the display base itself. Once that was done, I went for this Hobbycraft white and used a zenithal highlight. This is a bit like pre-shading, but you only do it directionally from above as if the sun is beating down onto these figures. This is going to create an interesting effect when we come to paint them shortly. And speaking of painting, I'm going to be using this Tamiya Dark Grey thinned down with some Tamiya Acrylic Thinners. This was done at roughly equal ratios and simply applied with a brush over the majority of the armoured car. I'm not too worried if the paint doesn't look fantastic because at the end of the day it is supposed to be damaged after all. I'd also use this paint as the uniform colour on the figures. Now with that paint dry I moved on to the transfers. So the transfers are printed by Cartograph and I soaked them in warm water. I then used Humbrol Decal Fix to help stick them down onto the surface of the plastic. I'm not too worried about any silvering if it does occur because as I'm sure you've guessed there will be some snow added later and that won't really detract from the effect. Vallejo Black was used to carefully paint the tyres on the wheels, taking care to avoid the areas I've already painted grey. I'll also use this black paint on the boots of the figures, and then I moved on to using this English uniform paint on the sandbags. 
Both of these paints had been thinned down with a touch of the acrylic thinners previously used. Humbrol 29, which is a dark earth acrylic, was then painted over the entire diorama base to try and give that mud a muddy colour. This was then dry brushed onto the lower sides of the armoured car to try and give it the effect that it's been in the same environment. I then moved on to use this flat flesh acrylic from Tamiya on the hands and faces of all of the figures. I am using two of the figures included in the set with the armoured car, but I have some 3D printed ones as well. Here, this matte number one primer grey was dry brushed over everything I've already done. So that includes the figures, the armoured car, the 3D printed accessories, and even the display base. Everything will get a dry brush of this to further bring out highlights and add some tonal variety. Because we've just had Halloween, I thought it would be fun to use one of these battery powered candles, which I have left over from that event. I quite like the flickering effect that this LED bulb has, so I'm going to use it inside a brazier that's burning for the figures to stay warm. So having disassembled this little candle, I've got the LED out. And it was a fairly simple matter to simply install it in the bottom of the 3D printed brazier, and it does give a reasonably good Good effect. To install it into the diorama I drilled a hole through the bottom of the base and fortunately the coaster does have a recess on the bottom where I can put the battery. So I glued this brazier into position passing the LED wires through the bottom and I have insulated them using a bit of tape. I then soldered on a little extra wire so that it could extend a little bit further inside the bottom of the base and when I come to add the battery all I'll simply do is tape it on so that the wires make connection and the LED lights up. It was suggested to me in my Discord server that the armoured car didn't look quite damaged enough, so to further enhance it I went and removed the end of the barrel and then again using my soldering iron I melted the end of the barrel into a sort of shape that resembled it having had some sort of catastrophic damage to the end of the gun. Now, turning my attention back to the diorama base, I mixed up some of this white glue and the humble brown from earlier. What this is going to do is give a muddy glue for some scatter grass to stick to. So I painted this on into various areas of the diorama base. I thought that the uh, grass may still have grown in despite the fact that there is a bit of a war on. I then sprinkled the grass all over the top. This is static grass so the shaker should apply a static charge to the strands and help them stand up. I then carefully removed all of the excess and saved it so that I could reuse it. I wanted to add some extra detail to the armoured car so to do this I've got some very thin paper this is from an envelope and it was soaked in some warm water and then carefully manipulated around and the aim here is to make this look like a tarpaulin so when the water dries it should retain its shape. Once this was done I, I would do another one on the other side as well I will then paint it in the same colour of paint that I used on the sandbags earlier to try and make it look a little bit more uniform as if if they're using the same materials but perhaps they were issued. Now it's time to start bringing all the elements of the diorama together. So everything was simply just glued down onto the base into positions that I thought looked quite good. So the vehicle went down and then these extra 3D printed crates. I've also got the figures to add and some extra small details like jerry cans and ammo boxes. But those will be added after I've done the snow because I don't think that they would necessarily have accumulated snow if they've been moving around. So for the snow, I've got this Knock Powdery Snow product, and I have used this before, but it was very many years ago. To apply this, I simply sprinkled it over the diorama base. I didn't want to go too heavy in certain areas, so it took a little bit of uh, time and manipulation to get it quite right, but I was going for a light dusting as if the uh, little outpost these soldiers have created has been caught off guard by the first snow of the year. Once that was done, I then proceeded to glue into place all the final details, and to finish off the effect of the burning brazier, I glued in some cotton wool, which has been painted with some black paint. The final step was to clean up the edge of the little diorama base by painting it black. And with that, I called my build of the Airfix SDKFZ234 armored car in its little diorama 
complete. Well, it's not often that I do a diorama, and for a very small project which only took me about a day and a half, I'm really happy with how this one has turned out. Yes, the Airfix 234 armoured car may not be the best kit in the world, and being a vintage classic, it certainly does show its age. However, I did have a lot of fun building it. The fit of the parts was generally quite good, but I did notice that there was a reasonable amount of flash that needed to be removed, and also some ejector pin marks, which in particular there was one on the back of one of the figures which I found to be quite annoying, but fortunately having cleaned that up it's not too noticeable. The cartograph decals apply to the model absolutely perfectly, and there aren't that many of them in this kit, so if you're not a fan of decals this is probably the perfect kit for you as there's only four of them. That being said though, I did go away from the painting instructions in this model. The painting instructions included in the kit are supposedly for a desert version of this vehicle. However, I'm led to believe that this never saw service in the desert, so it's almost like it's a fictional scheme from Airfix. That's why I decided to go for the German Grey, giving a bit of backstory that this has been used in Europe at some point in the late war, and these poor individuals have got themselves stranded out in the middle of nowhere, or perhaps have been ordered to hold a strategic point. They're using this very damaged and neglected armoured car as cover and have fortified it in some way to try and give themselves a little bit of cover. However, they have been caught off guard by the weather and they weren't quite prepared for it and have very hastily set up this brazier to try and keep themselves warm. As mentioned previously, I have pretty much used everything that was included in this kit. However, there were three figures and I have decided to omit one of them and replace it with two different figures which I 3D printed. Additionally, there were those 3D printed extras such as the jerry cans, the brazier and the ammo crates and also the 3D printed wheel hubs which I designed myself. All links to all STL files that I've used during this build will be in the description. Swinging back to talk about the history of this kit though, and I'm sure it's no surprise to many of you that this is quite an old design, with the toolings dating from 1964. The version I have here though is a 2019 release, but it does seem to be in the Airfix range in the Vintage Classic series for quite an extended period. Airfix does build this as a skill level 2, which indicates that it's probably not the easiest kit in the world, and I would be inclined to agree, given the fact that there are some areas which require a bit of cleanup and a bit of attention. And there are some elements of the build which are a little bit fiddly, such as installing the suspension and axles, which first time builders may have a little bit of trouble with. However, if you've built a couple of models, this shouldn't really present much of a challenge to you. And how much would you be paying to get this armoured car and these three figures? Well, at the time of this video it was retailing for £6.99 here in the UK, which does seem to be kind of in line with the prices on the lower end of the Vintage Classic series from Airfix. However, you're not really getting that much inside the box, so if you can get it cheaper, if you really wanted one that is, then I would definitely suggest looking around for it. As mentioned, I did get this one completely for free, which was donated to me by Moz6510Models, so a massive thanks to him, and don't forget to check out his channel too. I think it's probably time to wrap this one up though. The Airfix SD KFZ234 Armoured Car is definitely a kit which is showing its age and does suffer from some inaccuracies. There are naturally better versions of this particular vehicle out there. However, for messing about and putting it into a diorama or just having a bit of fun for something to build, this isn't that bad. I had a whole lot of fun creating this mini diorama and I'm really pleased with the results that I've managed to achieve. Let me know down in the comments what you think of my build and if my review was fair. Additionally, I'd also be interested in any other ideas for little dioramas like this. 
As always, a quick shout out to my patrons and channel members for the extra support they give the channel. A massive thanks to these guys on screen. And to find out what perks you get and how to join them, take a look at the link in the description. There are also other ways to help support the channel, which you'll find full information for down in the description box. However, the best way to support this channel for free is by subscribing and turning on those notifications. Don't forget that there is new merch now in my merch shop, so take a look under the video. Finally, the last thing to say is a massive thank you to you guys for watching this one, and I'll see you on the workbench again next time.